we're going to try to cover, um, I'll start by showing you Steven's demo because of course everybody, that's why you're here. Uh, then I'll explain to you a little bit what Unity 3D is, um, you know, and, and kind of some basic knowledge about Unity. Then I will show you how Mathematica and Unity connect and what we can do. And then Todd will tell you more about how we can extend this from just this Unity demonstration to a lot of other applications in the world and, and how we got to do this. So, <clears throat> what's Unity 3D? Um, thing to know is that it's the, in terms of game development, it's the most successful development platform at the moment. Uh, you can develop games on this, and I will show you a couple of things. Um, so let me open another project. Uh, called Angry Bot. So this is an example of a, a little game that is provided by Unity. Um, as a demonstration to teach people how to use it. Excuse all my meetings. Hopefully there is sound here that's going to work. So what you see here is a real, you know, very high quality uh, game. I'm being attacked here. I have to shoot things. So this is a full, you know, it's a complex game with all kind of effects you might have in a game. It's a 3D environment that's totally scripted. You can do a first person shooter. I'm going to die probably, you know. I'll stop quickly before death. Uh, <clears throat> so that's an example of things you can do in Unity. Most games that you see on the iOS or the Android, I would say my guess is that 40 to 50% of them now are used, uh, are built using Unity. Unity is free if you want to use it as an individual or a small corporation and you are ready to let them advertise that you're using them. So they have a very interesting business model. Let me show you another application of Unity, which I should have opened before. <clears throat> so during the um, America's Cup, uh, they were transmitting data and uh, showing uh, the America's Cup live in a virtual environment that was built on Unity. So you'll see here uh, how it works. We're going to see historical. This is the final race. And so this kind of environment here shows the boats uh, on the water and they are pretty far here. So we're going to get close to seeing them racing. We can see them race faster. The Americans have the lead and, uh, no, not the lead yet, but they're going to get, take the lead in a, any moment now. Uh, and so this whole environment shows you, it's a 3D environment. You can control the camera. You actually see San Francisco. It's a really nice real time rendering environment. And this is just using Unity. It's very easy to do something like that. And in fact, what I want to show you is that it's trivial now to do something like that where the simulation could be done by Mathematica and to use this engine as a rendering engine instead of the graphics engine of uh, Mathematica. So we know how this one ends, but let me go back to what we're showing here. So uh, Unity 3D is a generic 2D, 3D rendering environment. As I said, the output, once you create one project in Unity, by pressing a button, you can create a web version of it or you can create a desktop version of it, a mobile tablet. So it's very used. And even on the web, you have the choice between different models, whether you use a Unity player or you can use Flash. Um, and I, you know, as I said earlier, the business model is really interesting. So now what I'm going to do is show you Unity as an editor kind of looks like this. And here we still have the game I was, I was running earlier. It's really an environment to be editing a scene. So, um, sorry. You can see here the level that the, the player where I was before. And Unity is an environment. It's almost like a 3D, um, it's like a 3D editor where you can put objects in the scene. And here we see the hierarchy of all, hierarchy of all the objects that are in the scene. So my enemies here. Uh, a lot of spiders in this game. And you see all the parameters that the spider can have. And uh, for example, the mesh of the spider, let me try to find it here. Well, there's a script attached to it that tells the spider how to behave. Um, so all those, 
all those uh, objects are being managed. That's what Unity does. You put a level, you put object in it, and you tell which object to do, and then uh, it runs. And there are two key things about Unity. One is there are two modes in Unity. One mode, which is the editor, where uh, when you, you, know, you are adding objects and deciding where things go. And another mode, which is the game runs. And while the game runs, you're in a slightly different environment because you might still do editing and do things, but those things disappear when you stop the game. The game goes back to the starting place. So there is what we call the scene, and that scene is what you can edit. And then when you play the game, the scene evolves over time. But when you stop, it goes back to where it was. Uh, so the scene is kind of the starting position of every level in a game, for example. Uh, let me go back to the presentation. <clears throat> the thing that's interesting about Unity in terms of an environment is that it has shaders, physics, and we'll see some. In fact, that's what we saw earlier uh, in Christopher's. Did I show Christopher's demo? Not yet. I should have started with that. But <clears throat> let me show you Christopher's demo. I got distracted by my slides. It's always a problem. So we're going to see the, the project that um, Christopher did. Let me actually open it. So this is, in the editor, you see there is a wall of cubes here. And I'm going to run this project. And so now you see the game set up this way. It's cubes, and they are piled above one another. And because there's a physics system, they all fell, all the, the cubes fell. And they are there. In fact, they're undulating a little bit. And now I'm going to go to Mathematica. Oh, yeah. I don't think you need to be. Maybe I should stop. Attach. I think it worked. We'll see. Since this one. I'll have to resize this. So now what you're going to see is that I'm going to, so I took control of the game inside Unity with Mathematica, with some code, we'll get back on that. But not only that, but I collected some information from the game in real time in Mathematica, and I applied that in a dynamic. And so I got the curve of, you know, on the location of all the cubes and where they got displayed there. So I created a lot of things at the same time, controlled the game, connect, was connected in real time to the game, and extracted analytics from the game. So anyway, back to my talk here, I was saying, Physics, you know, so the fact that the cubes moved on everything, it's part of the physical simulation that exists inside. Sorry, I closed this. Um, you can also do particles. What you saw in the first game I played is that there, were, there was fire, there were bullets and things like that. All of those are particles that are moving. The fact that the character was walking, it's human motion, it's very easy to do also in, uh, in Unity. Uh, and as I explained, you have two modes, the editor mode and the game mode. So now I'm going to try to show you another more slow connectivity to Unity. You're doing on time, good. So I will open a different project. So when I, once I've opened my project, I need to open my scene because you can have different scenes. Good. So this is the scene that you can see maybe in a, in a wireframe or texture is fine. And I just have two cubes here. Let me look at the YAR key to make things simple. I have a cube. I have a cube with physics. I have a camera and I have some terrain and I have some other object that I use. I call them all for materials. So. 
currently I'm in the, in the editor. Uh, but one thing that's interesting in the editor is that I have a Wolfram menu or whatever menu you can add that you can implement inside Unity so that you can add user interface in Unity and that user interface can connect to Mathematica. So here I'm going to launch the kernel. In fact, it's quite easy to do everything in such a way that it automatically launch the kernel if you do something. And I'm going to insert an object from Mathematica here. So here it is. It's, it feels like Mathematica in many ways already. Uh, but this object has been totally created out of nothing using Mathematica controlling the editor. So now this object is in my scene forever. What's interesting is I can do so this object could have been made in a 3D editor and imported, but I use a scripting environment, Mathematica as a scripting environment to add that object. Uh, I'm going to add another object, which could be any formula. You know, it's, uh, it's using actually M10 now and the regions in M10 uh, to uh, the Prot 3D in, in M10 to read a piece of text as. Um, uh, mesh region and then it extrudes that mesh region and uh, or it doesn't, we'll see. It takes a while because, sorry, I'm in the scene here. Hope it's not under. Well, I don't know, this one does not work. I'll skip it, sorry, I'll get back to it. Um, but you can take things that you know, are very, very complex to create, now you can use Mathematica to create them. So this was an example that I was trying to show text. I'll try it again later because it usually works. Um, now I'm going back to Mathematica. I'm going to hide this. And here I'm going to connect to Unity. It's kind of, let me try to. Yeah, let me quit this. We're really trying hard to not reboot this Mac, so. <laughs> Actually, there was a user error. I have two more here. Yeah. Oh, ah, I see this one is still running now. Sorry, because I'm, Christopher's demo was using a different version of Mathematica, so I need two versions of Mathematica running and I have to recover from that. I think we're good. Yes. So what I've done here is that I've created, I've extracted, I ask Unity, where are the objects in the scene? And so I've created a view of the world here with their names on the objects and everything, which tell me where is the position? What's the position of every object in the scene? And now I can look at that in Mathematica and I can debug or do, I can use Mathematica as kind of a debugger for my scene here. Let me try to show that a little better. But so that view of the scene I have here, um, maybe I should not have maximized it. No, no, it's running. I don't want to not run it. Uh, because the game is running and that's what I can do is I can use Mathematica while the game is running. There's really not much going on in the game now, but I will show you now the use of a dynamic. So we were, earlier in Christopher's demo, we used dynamic to update the notebook about the game. But now I can use, um, or not. Come on, I think I did. Maybe I missed something. Oops. Well, 
Well, let's figure out what's going on here because this works. Do you not think it's running? Ah, it's because I don't get the beep. We're not connected to the net, to the. Uh, give me a second to understand what's going on. Yeah, the kernel is not connecting. No, I think they are, I think it's gone now. I only have this. This looks good. We are in business. Yes. So now what you see here is just, I can use all of the controls as long as I use dynamic. I can use all of the UI control of Mathematica to control anything inside Unity. So the beauty of Unity here is that they've exposed everything using C sharp. And so because of Netlink, we can connect and we can control anything in Unity through Mathematica. And then we can use now the UI of Mathematica to control any kind of object. So I have this object here. For example, I will add another object to the scene. So I created another cube here by just calling simple code. I can change the color, oops, control the materials. Uh, this is a slightly different material, the same as we've seen before. And I can add a mesh to an object. So I'm not going to run it now. I don't think it's that useful, but the same, um, the same way that I can use from the menu in Unity and add an object, I can actually within itself, the Mathematica, I can decide to add any object. And so <clears throat> again, there's the, for people who understand a little bit Unity, the, the thing that's really interesting that other systems cannot do is because of an external process, I can do things during the editing mode so I can now create worlds that are dramatically more complex because I can script them you know, in, in Mathematica rather than writing them by you know, using the editor to create them by hand and I can put more complex objects and I can use that external process to monitor what the game is doing so create real-time analytics, debugging environment for the game while um, you know, while the game is running and without interfacing or actually having to change my scripting of the game in the first place. Good afternoon. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some implementation details. I'll be relatively brief because Luke has got the cool stuff. Um, so let me just set the scene here. Uh, Luke and his wife Sarah very graciously invited me out to stay with them for a few days in San Francisco and sail on their boat and watch some of the America's Cup racing. So I, I jumped at the chance. I, got out there in September, and uh, actually it was the very first day of the America's Cup Finals between the USA and New Zealand. And on the very first morning driving to the harbor in the car, Luke starts telling me about this project. He's got, oh, I got a link to this environment called Unity, this game development environment. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really great, and I'm listening to him thinking, okay, okay, and he's talking about Unity. He's telling some of the things he was presenting here. And then, well, he's, ideas are spinning in my head about how we might do this. And then he says, oh, it's written, it's, it's .NET. It actually runs in Mono, which is an open source .NET clone. Uh, so then my ears pick up immediately. And then he continues to tell me, and the whole thing is written in C Sharp. The... My microphone's on, right? You guys can hear me? Um, and the whole thing is like C Sharp from top to bottom, the scripting environment that developers write in to create their games is C Sharp or some other language, but it's a, it's a complete .NET environment from top to bottom. So my eyes just got really wide and I said, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake. 
And you know, for some suitable definition of the word cake, that turned out to be true. Because really, in fact, in just a couple evening sessions uh, on a weekend, you really got the thing up and running to sort of proof of concept level basic functionality in, in just a couple sessions. So I'll just briefly, in the link architecture, what you see going on here, there's really three links. There's three programs, Unity, the kernel, and the front end. And of course, this first link between the front end and the kernel you all know about. But it turns out we have two links between Unity and the kernel. One, the one in the middle that says calls from scripts, that's what you might think of as the most obvious link between Unity. I mean, I, I'm writing some Unity script and I decide I need to call Mathematica for some computation. I, I want to perform some physics computation in Mathematica, I get the numbers back and, and use them somehow in the game. So that's a standard, just a simple call from my C Sharp script into Mathematica. And for that we have .NET Link API, that provides a nice high-level API for calling Mathematica in various ways, very simple to use, so that's straightforward. Then there's this other link that says calls from Mathematica. That's a link for things like that Luke was showing where you, you're scripting Unity from Mathematica, or you're typing net new blah, 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 or you're calling some method on a Unity object directly from Mathematica. So we, we need two links for these two operations because links always really have a direction associated with them. Data always flows in both ways across a single link. You send something, you get something back. But if we have flow originating in the kernel going into Unity, and we have flow originating in Unity going into the kernel, those have to be on two separate channels, because otherwise they will, they'll, they'll interfere with each other. You'll send something, and then you'll read, and you'll think you're getting the result back of what you sent, but in fact you're getting something that was sent without your knowledge you know, originating from the other side. So we need to establish two links, and really, the complexity of building this link is entirely in managing and maintaining these, these three links, especially since Unity does a very strange thing, it's a very complex internal environment. When it shifts from editor mode to game mode, it completely shuts down the VM and it starts it back up again. It's, it's a very complex system. So, so managing these links is really the only challenging aspect of this link. Right now, I'm just briefly gonna talk about the application structure. I know you don't care, but I just wanna show you the scale of this thing. It's really only three c -sharp script files. The mathematica.cs file is the, is the sort of core of the thing. It's only about 200 lines of code, almost entirely so, you know, deals with managing opening and closing these links and making sure that they're alive, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's a Mathematica link script. It's just a couple few lines, and a Mathematica menu script. They're just a few. You can ignore those scripts if you don't care about their functionality. And then really on the Mathematica side, there's just one Wolfram language file. It's about 40 lines of code, entirely, uh, entirely uh, associated with managing the links. Right now, I don't know if I really, anyone cares about this, but I just want to show, this is what it might look like, this is what it does look like if you are writing in a Unity script to call Mathematica. So I'm a game developer, and I, Unity, you know, Unity games are created through these scripts, so I, this is what a Unity script might look like for a very simple game object. This is something that calls Mathematica. So the update method is called by the Unity engine. If your class has an update method, it gets called 100, 100 times a second, once every frame. So this is just some trivial thing. I'm calling some methods in Unity to, to find the human game object. This is from the Angry Bots demo that Luke was showing earlier, the for shooter game. So then this line, you know, I kernel link in Mathematica. That, that's just how I acquired the link object. And then I just say evaluate. And in this case, I'm throwing away the answer because I don't care. What I'm doing here is I'm just updating the variables x and y in Mathematica with the x and z positions of the player in Mathematica, in the game. So what, how you might use this, it's basically pushing this data into Mathematica 100 frames a second. So if I had a dynamic in a Mathematica notebook, the dynamic of x comma y, and I started playing the game, then that dynamic would be showing me the position of the player as it moved around inside the game. Just a trivial example of what a script might look like. All right, and, but the real thing, and this is what really made me excited when Luke told me this was a .NET application, is that we, I knew right away we'd be able to call from Mathematica into Unity, and this is the real slick thing that lets us you know, script Unity from Mathematica, do anything we want, just completely arbitrary scripting programming from Mathematica. So instead of writing as a, you know, a C-sharp developer, I have to write some C-sharp class, plug it into the game, run it and see what happens. With 
the Unity link, I can just sit in Mathematica and while the game is running, I can load arbitrary game classes into Mathematica, I can call arbitrary methods on those classes wherever I want. And, you know, Luke was uh, showing you adding cubes and things to a scene and in Christopher's demo where a ball is launched, there's just a single method call that gives that ball some momentum and it goes firing into that, into that set of blocks. So I mean, I'm now attached to this incredibly rich visualization and, and you know, analysis, computation, physics, whatever we want, environment in Mathematica where I can monitor my game any way I want, control my game any way I want. Like Luke said, I can write scripts that, that generate complex objects and just call them and not have to uh, you know, do it by hand in an editor. So I just, the fact that .NET Link lets us, I mean, in fact, Stephen borrowed one of my favorite lines that I've used for like 10 years in my JLink and .NET Link talks in his keynote, that because we have this line at a time environment for scripting in Mathematica, I mean, it's, it's really the case that .NET Link makes Mathematica a better environment for scripting a game in Unity than Unity itself. And I mean, it's, it's a thousand times better environment for scripting a game in Unity than, than Unity itself is. Finally, just to remind everyone, this is hard work. And uh, it was a challenging weekend of, of uh, difficult software development. So, do you have any closing remarks? Yeah, I have some closing remarks. So, you know, what could this be used for? I think that if people want to, you know, anybody can download Unity for free. We're going to, you know, publish the, the little piece of code that uh, can connect Mathematica to Unity if you want to play with it. But what could we do with this? Well, an example is we could take presentation notebooks and then move them in Unity as a 3D environment, a 3D book or something like that, where you can turn the pages where you will see your slides move in 3D. Um, you know, or you can create animations that you want to demonstrate and have a higher set of graphics that you can do in Mathematica and integrate that in that environment. So, uh, but the concept of building tools, you know, hopefully in the community now that is quite active, as, we, as soon as we push this, we'll try to uh, help people who are trying to do some new development around this so that if you can, you know, in Unity, the beauty is you have a high frame rate so you can easily create a movie uh, in real time that will do things that, you know, we don't get to do in real time in Mathematica because of the powerful graphics actually aimed at a different representation than what Unity is aiming for.